this is Scott Welch, Muscle Insider Magazine, and we are here with Jeff Harrington of Aranti. This is the number one provider of packaging in the sports nutrition industry. How are you doing today, Jeff? I'm doing great. Thank you, Scott. Thanks very much for having me on. Now, a lot of consumers use protein powder, gainers, pre-workouts, amino acids, everything there. And I know you've been in the industry for a long time. But how important is packaging when it comes to sports nutrition products? Well, I mean, I'm in packaging, so I'm going to say packaging is very important. But uh, but on the other side, uh, yeah, of course. I mean, uh, ultimately, packaging uh, pretty much qualifies the, the the perceived value of the product inside. So if you've got great packaging... Uh, the consumer is confident that you 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 put the same quality on the inside of the uh, packages you do on the outside. So yeah, it's 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 extremely important to be of the best quality. Now, as a connoisseur of packaging, I mean myself, and I know you are too. We had some great discussions on this. Who would you say are some of the standout brands when it comes to packaging? I mean, in terms of you just looking at it design wise of what you see in the sports nutrition industry. Well, when it comes to uh, standout, I mean, obviously, uh, you know, I do like uh, I do like uh, the, uh, the, um, the the mutant brand. I do I do Iovate's done a great rebrand, by the way. They're they're looking they're looking very good. Love the rebrand compared to the older style. Uh, it took them a little while to get there. I was kind of surprised, but uh, but their their rebrand looks looks great. Uh, there's a lot of other brands that are doing very well as well, like Diamatize. I love their brand. Like I, I like all of the all the brands that are taking a taking more of a clean, pure, simple approach to, uh, to, to nice quality, quality packaging. Um, the packaging design tends to be a little on the cycl cyclical side. And I, I can say that because I think I probably designed the very first sports nutrition packaging when sports nutrition wasn't even a thing yet. And I think that's going back almost 20 years. And, and back then it was very loud and very colorful and very like, Oh my God, in your face metallics and, a bit of that was my fault. So if anybody got really sick of it, they can they can shoot me down if they want. That's fine. But that's okay because you know things change, and now you've got all different types of styles and all different types of patterns, and and it's got a lot to do with your demographic as well. Like who are you, who are you selling to? Like uh, you know, certain brands are going to sell to the professionals. Certain brands want to sell to the bodybuilders. Certain brands want to sell to the average mom and pop consumer. Uh, so it all de kind of depends on your demographic of who you're selling to is how the packaging really should look. Absolutely. I mean, I, in my opinion, you can't really talk about packaging design unless you're talking about Ghost and you're talking about uh, Glaxon. I mean, yep. these are things that the uh, Pitbull Labs, I see that in the background there. They were sort of one of the first of that cartoon animation yep. sort of um, look, which... Um, uh, is, is obviously very catchy, but I really uh, also um, UK uh, Nas, Naughty Boy Lifestyle. Naughty Boy looks, uh -huh. he's, he is, yeah, he's got a beautiful design. Yeah, I, I absolutely love his design. It's uh, it's, it's very eye-catching, very professional, very clean. Uh, you you look at that product and you're going to be saying, yeah, that's that, that's definitely going to be some some good quality product in there because the guy cares about what he's putting on the shelf. G Fuel, I mean, collaboration after collaboration after collaboration yeah. in those. Oh, areas. yeah. The, yeah. The amount of collaborations G Fuel has had is mind boggling. Uh, they, they do a great job. They've got great designers. They've got great designs. Uh, they're uh, they're they're a very exciting brand for sure. They're, uh, you know, they're not in so much a sports nutrition, but uh, but they're certainly uh, making a name for themselves in, in just just about every part of the industry. Yeah, awesome. So uh, listen, one of the things that a lot of uh, supplement consumers may not know is that if they are buying a product which has poor quality material on the pouches and things like that, because let's face it, I mean, you can't really go into a store and not see a gainer that's in a giant bag. And I know you're instrumental to bringing that into North America and really, you know, harnessing that globally. Um and brands like Mutant and uh, All Max and think brands like that have really done such an amazing job with uh, pouches and that. But sometimes if the quality of the pouch isn't there, it can actually reduce the shelf life of the product. Is that true? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Like, uh, you know, when you're, uh, you know, it, when you're a brand and you're buying pouches and, uh, you know, I, I keep on, you know, I, I like that old adage. People have that adage, you know, I've got, I've got uh, customers, I get suppliers, I got friends always tell me the same thing. You, you want quality, you want uh, service and you want price. The problem is you got to pick two. 
Mm -hmm. You can't have all three because you're 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 not going to get all three. You can't get the best quality, best price, best performance uh, across across the board because that that just that just that, that just doesn't exist. Because one of the things about uh, the high quality packaging is it, it does take time. You can't you can't you can't turn around. I, I hear of companies, you know, manufacturing uh, you know twelve pound bags in 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 eight to ten days. Well, if you've got a supplier saying they can do it in eight to 10 days, I'm going to say you're going to have problems with that packaging down the road because uh, quite quite literally the packaging, this is technical. The uh, When you print packaging, uh, you're printing it with inks. Those inks have to dry and that's called gassing. So they, they, the vapors have to leave the film before they can laminate it. Well, that gassing to be done correctly is five days. So when are you going to print and make the pouches? So... They're not. They're not letting it. They're not letting it dry, and then the then the then the pouches get on, and you know they get delivered. They look okay. They get on the shelf, and all of a sudden the pouches start falling apart, and your and your product is shot. So you you got to be very careful not to take shortcuts. And when a packaging guy says, "I'm sorry, it's three to four weeks, or it's four to five weeks," it's three to four weeks, four to five weeks. You got to work with it. Um, and then you know, and then ultimately, I can't say where. Uh, but in general, uh, you know, if you, you, you if you get the cheapest price, chances are you don't have a, a, a high quality barrier or, or sometimes no barrier at all. And what is a barrier? barrier when you say a barrier? Um... Well, a barrier is like a, it's like a layer in the film that we uh, that we put that basically has got a very, very, very small, um, like very, very, very tight microns. Like uh, so that, you know, basically oxygen, air and moisture can't get through them. So, like for example, a regular uh, a regular Ziploc bag has no barrier. So, if you put it in a uh, if you put it in an environment, if you put a bag of protein in a Ziploc bag, a bag of protein in, in, in one of our bags, for example, the Ziploc bag. Let's, let's use chocolate for example. In you know four to five months, the chocolate won't taste like much of anything. Whereas in our bag, you know, two years, three years, sometimes down the road, it's still going to taste great because. What happens with a Ziploc bag is the air and the moisture goes in there, not to mention the chocolate basically dissipates into the air and, and it's gone. So your your flavor, your flavor is the first thing to go. And then you know, ultimately everything else goes after that. So again, you want to be you want to make sure you know what you're buying when you're buying pouches. And you know, I like to tell my customers that, that uh, you know, ultimately, you know, Aranti's built a good reputation, a great reputation across the board in sports nutrition. We like to focus on that industry because I love it. I when I decided that I was going to get into packaging over 20 years ago, I thought this is the best bunch of guys, and I want to be involved in that business because I like hanging with these guys. I can relate. I go to I go to the gym regularly, and so this is a, this is a good thing because as a startup 20 years ago. You you have to pick a vertical because you can't just hit the world. Now, Not to mention, uh, there's there was literally no proper representation, you know, in, in in that industry from a packaging company that actually really cared uh, to educate the consumer. Now I've got I, I've got probably a uh, hundred education videos on the go right now, uh, just just teaching people what you know the OTR is, WBTR, all the different definitions of packaging. So uh, so yeah, it's a little bit lengthy, but. You know the the barrier and the the film structure and the strength and the amount of headspace, all that stuff is extremely important. Now, and one of the things you bring up with headspace, and I don't know the technical terms for it, but when you open your protein tub or your you know you grab your BCA product and you sort of open it up and you're looking at it, and I got this new one, the All In from uh, our friend over Jim McMahon over at Mutant, and you open it up. It's almost at the top, yep. but it's not quite at the top. Yep. Now, why? what happens on the manufacturing side? Because some consumers think they're being ripped off. They think it's like a, a bottle of pop or something like that where it should go right to the brim. But can you just explain for our audience on the manufacturing, if it's in the pouches and the protein is dropping in, yep. what exactly is happening as to why it can't sit right at the very top? Well, two two things with bottles and pouches, fairly similar, fairly different. Uh, with the bottles, well, I'll start off with the bottles and pouches, same thing. Uh, when you've got a, a machine and it's got an auger and it's pumping the powder into a bottle or a pouch, in between every little grain of branched chain amino or every grain of protein, there's going to be some oxygen molecules. So there's air, so it's going to be fluffy. So when, you, when they fill it the first time, it's going all the way to the top. And then by the time you get it, it's settled and the airs come out. So you, it's, it's, it has to be that big of a package, especially with the bottles, 
to be to be and, and the pouches as well to be that 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 form. Now with the pouches, sometimes you wonder, well, you've got about thirty percent. We call it headspace. Mm-hmm. Well, why thirty percent headspace and not ten percent headspace mm-hmm. on the big pouches, for example? On the big pouches, uh, you know, everybody in the in the industry has experienced uh, their big pouches bursting, uh, ex- except for mine. <laughs> of course, <laughs> actually, some so, some some have, but it's 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 usually there, there's always a reason, and and sometimes it's the film structures that companies use. Sometimes it's the size of the pouch, and sometimes it's the headspace. Sometimes it's the packing. Uh, You're I, I, saying I that the, the actual bag breaks open. Um, yeah, yeah. When the bag actually, or when, or, okay. That's right. When the bag actually breaks open. So, so what happens is if you don't have the correct amount of headspace, and there is a formula for the amount of headspace you have to have, the bag, uh, if the bag has any weakness whatsoever, it's literally going to explode on even just as as, as low as a uh, 18 inch drop. Now, we do our drop tests, I think uh, you, you, I showed you it once. I've seen the probably, video. <laughs> probably, yeah, from like, we, we do eight eight feet, we'll throw them 10 feet in the air. And, and you know, we've got the right film and we've got, uh, we, we've got the right size, we've got the right structure and we've got the right headspace. So we, we are not general, we don't have any issues. It's just when when you cut corners and don't go through all the processes, you uh, you end up with trouble. Okay. And in terms of uh, COVID, obviously with the, I mean, it's affected every industry as a whole. Uh, How has this affected the bottles and lids and pouches and and labels and the whole packaging side of supplements? How has it affected the industry? Well, COVID uh, COVID in general, I mean, ultimately, I can't tell you how many customers are switching to bags from bottles. Like it's, 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 it's an exodus and not just in sports nutrition world in a lot of different worlds. I've actually even got a lot of very large customers now switching from boxes to pouches because pouches are one of the readily available items. Mm. And, um, and, and, you know, and ultimately we're doing hundred percent recyclable with barrier as well. So this is a big trend that's coming on board. So, but with the bottles, ultimately they're just not available. A lot of that's got to do with the fact that the major menu for menu, major manufacturing of bottles has been coming out of China. Uh, China shut down uh, Shenzhen port for I don't know how many months. Uh, Chinese manufacturing they shut it down for I don't know how many weeks, like a week or a week or ten days out of every month they shut down manufacturing. Um, so there's been a real, real, real shortage. Well, as a brand, you can't you can't afford that shortage. Most most of the clients I talk to are saying we're waiting. We have to order bottles ten months ahead. We have to order the lids at 12, 12 months ahead. No, we're talking months, not weeks. And uh, so, you know, when they order pouches, you know, we we're talking weeks, not months. So that, that that's been a that's been a really big thing. Now, ha- having said that, when you talk uh, when you talk the way the, the 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 world is going, the way North America is going, we should have been using pouches way more in the bottles years ago, just like the rest of the world, just like the rest of Europe, because you're you know, there, there's I could I could talk hours about the benefits versus the environmental footprint and everything else. But. Bottom line is the, the 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 big push. We're talking Walmart, Costco, uh, environmentally, uh, all the big packaging companies. The big push is reduce, 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 because we don't have the infrastructure to go compostable yet. So you got to reduce the amount of plastics. And when you go from a pouch, from a bottle to a pouch, you're you're reducing usually a minimum of seventy four percent. Wow. Now, yeah. how is this shortage affecting the price? Because, you know, if I'm Joe Average and I go into a supplement store and I see that uh, obviously the price of my protein is higher. Obviously, we've heard about protein prices rising, creatine prices going through the roof. But how has the packaging shortages and things with COVID affecting the price of supplements in the industry? Well, in, in 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 general, the you know, in general, the packaging pricing has gone up somewhat. Uh, no, it's probably I would suggest the increases is probably the least amount out of just about everything, uh, like raw materials like protein powders and anything to do with grains, for example, from Ukraine and whatnot. They're they're all going through the roof because, you know, if you can't get wheat, uh, somebody somewhere is going to substitute for something else, and that's going to affect just about everything else as well. So the Ukraine war has got a lot of a, a lot to do with a lot of the shortages that people don't don't recognize. They say, "Well, it's not wheat, yeah, but somebody's using it instead somewhere." So you know, like protein is is typically considered a food in some parts of the world. 
Yeah, absolutely. Now, how has Aranti sort of pivoted in COVID to better service their customers? Because I know you work with all the top all the top companies in the industry. What have you done differently to help these supplement companies through the sort of COVID chaos we've all sort of faced? Well, I mean, differently. I mean, we've always we've always had a we've always had a very 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 solid supply chain. Uh, we've uh, we've also started doing some local manufacturing, some local converting. We also partnered up, and we uh, we are we are starting to invest in some equipment for the converting as well locally. Um, we we do see more more of our local manufacturing happening, and and we we anticipate within a few years to uh, you know at the very least we're going to own our own converting. So that we're going to be just just being able to select a printer and then do our own converting, and the reason for that is because you know when uh, one one of the benefits of dealing with us is when when you deal with a printer for pouches and and he's slammed, uh, that's it he's slammed you're 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 done unless you're his number one two or three customers and unfortunately, very few sports nutrition companies even the big ones are in that category of these big printers because these printers are doing pouches for like Scott's Miracle Grow and Kellogg's and companies like that and they're number one so sports nutrition is about ninth on the list actually behind pet treats believe it or not in the way of in the way of volumes so we have the ability to you know fix uh delivery dates you know you know every time we quote something now we always quote a a we quote us a, a, a six to eight week lead time we quote a, an eight to ten week lead time and we quote a 10 to 10 to 15 week lead time it's based on where we're where we're doing, who we're dealing with, where we're getting them, and and obviously price. So we we always give the options, and uh, and we we give about four different options now, and it's quite 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 uh, quite unique on how how many times people say, yeah, you know what, we're okay this time for ten to fifteen weeks. We want to save twenty percent, but we need them in six weeks, so we'll we'll we'll, we'll pay the twenty percent. And our lead times are honest. We're not we're not you know I, I hate it when somebody says. We'll do them in three weeks and then they show up in five. Yeah. yeah. And then I, get, and I always get a call in the fourth week when there's a competitor does that. I always get a call in the fourth week. How soon can you do it? And I said, well, it was four weeks, four weeks ago. Now it's still four weeks, which is another four weeks. So I'd have been delivering this week if you had trusted me. But, you know, that's happened a few times in the last year. And, and you know, I hate saying no, but we're never going to lie about our deliveries. Yeah, absolutely. Now, the tw I saw a video with a 20 pound bag doing a drop test. Yep. It's just amazing. What is the largest protein powder bag, weight gain powder bag that you've ever uh, you've ever produced? Well, the biggest one we've produced is a twenty-two pound. 22. Um, yep, yeah, twenty-two pounds. But you know what? We've actually we can we can legitimately do um, probably thirty-five pounds now. Wow. And uh, and the other thing too is about the about the twenty-two pound pouch that we that we've uh, that we just did we can actually do a 22 pound double which would be 44 pounds so but the thing is that you can't carry it out of the store it's kind of you'd have to be awful big but but we could do a 44 we could do it we could easily do a 44 pound pouch <laughs> and it won't and it won't burst <laughs> and bodybuilders wouldn't have to go to the gym they could just are you talking when you say a double you're talking about your obviously yeah, dual chamber yeah, the dual chamber so what we would do is we make a dual chamber 22 pounds each side wow. we could do that if somebody if somebody's got the cojones to order that one <laughs> jim I love the mutant, mutant mass has got the mutant way i see the mutant way behind you it's yeah. got that dual chamber uh you know vanilla chocolate kind of yeah. uh, thing going i could just sort of see the bodybuilders out there buying this and then just tearing it apart and you got the side laterals there you've got the you could even you could do flies you could do all kinds of curls that's uh, right so uh, we get a home gym uh, and a gainer at the same time that's right. Yep. You don't have to buy the equipment. Just buy the protein. How long have you been going to the Olympia for? I mean, I've seen you so many years at the Olympia, Dubai Muscle Show, Arnold Classic. Yeah, you're regular there. But you've been supporting the industry since how long you've been at these shows for? Boy, oh boy. I mean, I've, I've never really sat down. It's got to be 20 years at least. Um, it's probably more than that. It's probably probably more like 25 maybe more <laughs> so i don't want to age myself wow. but, okay yeah. but it's, it's, it's probably at least 25 years i've been to the olympia so many times and and the arnold uh more times than the olympia the last couple of years i i, I didn't go to the olympia olympia well the last couple of years i did i i did miss a couple of years in there um because i, I just found that the uh the arnold had uh 
the Arnold had a, for me was a really, it, it was seemed to be a much greater environment for, for my clients and what I was doing. Sure. But the, uh, but the Olympia certainly looks like it's, uh, it's coming back strong. So we're, we're, we're definitely going to be doing the Olympia this year. Back in Vegas, and you also in went Vegas. in Dubai at the Dubai. Well, that's the other reason we didn't go. <laughs> it yeah, Vegas. it wasn't in Vegas. It was in Florida last year. I was there. But uh, Dubai Muscle Show, I mean, it's just really great to see that you support the sports nutrition industry because a lot of people don't know in the sports nutrition industry that you have a massive business in mainstream foods. Like, you're yep. not just doing yep. packaging in this area. This is your this is your, your passion. That's right. Uh, but... You obviously Aranti is services the mainstream food companies. Uh, some of the projects that I've seen you working on, I just had no idea how big Aranti really is. So, as a supplement company, when you're working with Aranti, you're able to leverage the experience you're getting from mainstream food, which that as obviously at such a higher scale. Yeah, it's it's mainstream mainstream food's got quite a quite quite a different uh, quite a different category. The 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 volumes are much larger, uh, obviously. The, uh, the 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 packaging in Main Street Foods you you don't have to do usually as much education for the consumer. They usually the the, the Main Street Food packaging uh, buyers tend to have a really good handle on on what they're getting. So it's so it, it tends to be a little bit easier when you when, like when you when you send out a film specification to a a group like that they know what they're they definitely know what they're looking at mm -hmm. and which which is which is which is really nice so then they then they understand the they understand why maybe you know why a uh, why an alox is more money than a met pet for example i mean the average person doesn't even know what i just said but but why is it why is it more I money <laughs> <laughs> so, so there, there i mean there are there are there are there are benefits to both but what but why is one more money and and, and what percentage so they they understand the percentages of increase they understand uh, they understand why and they understand whether or not they need it so it's it's a bit of it's a bit of a it's a bit of a different world uh for sure and uh yeah it's 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 the lead times are more forgiving in mainstream because they typically know what they need for a lot of them know what they need for the year and say well this is this is our schedule and uh, you know, knock yourself out. So we have the ability. Like for some mainstream clients, we actually do an inventory ship and ship and uh, like uh, inventory and ship. So we we might manufacture like bar wraps, for example, energy bar wrappers. We might manufacture like uh, three or four million, and then just ship out you know a million at a time, and then just keep them in the warehouse. That way, when they want them, it's only a three or four day delivery. Yeah. So we have a in revolving inventory program that we've done for for that group. We're we're also going to start offering that with uh, with some sports nutrition clients as well. Say we we'll just do a revolving inventory. We just keep them on hand. You need them, we ship them. You we invoice you. You pay in your terms, and away we go. So that sort of organization makes the efficiencies of the business, the efficiency of my business, much better because there's you know there's the quoting process is is not there anymore because you've already got your got your agreement. You're not going back and forth pricing. You're not getting three prices or whatever it is you may do. You're not worried about is it going to be stuck at the border or is it going to be stuck in customs or is it going to be, are you going to have transportation, even transportation in the United States during COVID, just to get something from Chicago to Buffalo at one point took a week. And uh, because of the, because of the, the, the lack of trucks. So it was, it, you know, it got, it got really bad. So at least if you've got inventory and you've got it sitting in a specific warehouse close to where the client needs it, you know, then you're then, then you're rocking. Now, you know what? I, I mean, everybody's waiting for this. I know I'm waiting for this. Uh, people who are watching this video or in the sports nutrition industry, either people who are fanatics over it like I am or people who are on the industry side working for supplement companies. Yeah. What are the new innovations that supplement companies can get access to soon from Aranti, and what will the consumer be seeing in the market in 2023 in the packaging world? Yeah, new innovations are good. Ultimately, we know about the chamber pouch. Um, I've got another little one I'll share with you in a minute, but I think one of the one of the heaviest hitting innovations is going to be the 100% recyclable pouches. Mm -hmm. um, and, and not to mention, you can we, you know you can do them you can do them rotogravure, you can do them flex, you can do them digital, and and they have barriers, so you're not you're not losing any of the functionality of the packaging. So that's that's going to be one of the biggest hitters uh, in the uh, in in the next uh, year or two. Uh, certainly, Walmart and Costco are starting to push for it. They're, I mean, I think Costco is pushing for pouches. Walmart is pushing for reduction of plastic, which is the same thing. 
Uh, one of the things we actually just came up with or just developed is is this little thing here. Wow. You can see hold it. That up, hold it up. That's great. What is that? Yeah. Okay. So that is a, this is an eight ounce, eight ounce pouch. Okay. Drink, eight ounce drink, eight ounce drink, eight ounce drink with perforations. This is a prototype, so it's not perforated. So you pull them apart. So this is a, this is a four up RTD. So you can put your, uh, you can put your energy drink in there. We can do any size from basically from eight ounce up to a liter. Okay. And, uh, and then, uh, and then just pull, you know, pull off the cap and away you go. We've also got new valve technology, which isn't on this one, which will go in here. And the valve technology is, uh, is a one-way valve. So when you, when you take a pouch and you squeeze it, mm -hmm. the, the liquid comes out, but then when you turn it upside down, it won't unless you're squeezing it. So it's a one-way valve. And that makes these pouches a hundred percent recyclable because there's, because there's, because there's no spout. So we're definitely taking a run at Tetra on this one. Very cool. So these could be seen in RTDs like yeah. protein. Would it work with uh, protein uh, RTDs? Oh yeah, hundred percent. It, it'll work. It'll work literally with with any 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 liquid. Um, we can also we've also managed we've also managed to do uh, basically the flat bottom flat, flat bottom pouch in uh, a, obviously a very 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 small footprint. So like you know two inch two, you know two inch by two inch by five inch mm -hmm. uh, with with a zipper for uh, for supplements like pills. So now you've got little flat bottom pouches instead of bottles for your entire supplement line so we've, we've developed that and we're actually the first one actually probably the first one definitely the first one in north america to develop that we actually worked with a uh, work with a machine machine manufacturer to modify equipment to make that small of a pouch because that that technology doesn't exist right now so if you were to go to your average printer and say i want these little wee flat bottom bags they go say, yeah i can't do it the actual minimum in the marketplace is about uh, six inches by nine inches for for that technology, and so we've 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 developed that and uh, we've got that in production now as well. And like I can't say what international brands, sure. which aren't sports nutrition, we're doing it for right now, but we've got a we've got a major company you'll see in every pharmacy in North America uh, next year. You're going to see our little pouches, so it's 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 great. And for them, we've actually also. Because it's new technology and they have specific product for filling, we've also included the filling lines for these pouches to in our proposal, and they've accepted for proposal. So now we're making the pouches and the filling lines. So it's, there you have it. You're getting the insider <laughs> scoop on uh, on these new innovations. This is super exciting. Um, and where can fans go to sort of find out more companies out there, find out more, uh, getting quotes from you if you're a supplement company owner and working with you? How can people get a hold of you? Well, a number of ways. I mean, I'm very active on LinkedIn. So it's uh, just look up Baranti and Jeff Harrington on LinkedIn. I'm, I'm all over LinkedIn. Yeah. Uh, Aranti, uh, we've got you know, www.aranti.com. Uh, we do have a you know contact us page. I uh, I personally uh, review all the contacts. Quite often it's um, some foreign language <laughs> so, on the contact page, but but no, we, uh, we 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 review those regularly. And either myself or one of our uh, one of our salespeople will certainly reach out. You know, usually within twenty four hours. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's uh, there's there's lots of ways to get a hold of us in that regard. And Go to the Olympia, go to the Arnolds, go to Dubai Muscle. Um, God knows how many more. We go to Global Pouch Forum. You'll see me speaking, myself personally speaking, at a number of different flexible packaging association shows. Uh, I'm a public speaker in a lot of different uh, venues right now. So lots of lots of places. And I like your YouTube channel. For those of you who you definitely, if you're in the supplement industry, you should definitely check out the Aranti YouTube uh, channel because you get into the importance of packaging, the science of packaging, and just different episodes sort of educate uh, the the brand in, you know, a, a thing or two that they may not have considered on the back end of it, yep. which I think uh, obviously is very helpful. Um, listen, Jeff, I really want to thank you for your time today. And uh, for those of you, check it out at aranti.com. Jeff Harrington, Scott Welch, Muscle Insider, signing off. Thank you, Scott.